I don't know if you're aware, but there's a lot of new skincare in the drugstore. I'm here at Walgreens because CVS always has that annoying alarm that goes off whenever the door opens and it's just a miserable experience for you guys. So I came over here to Walgreens to check out what is new in the realm of drugstore skincare. Dove has recently reformulated and relaunched their signature body wash, Nuvo. And allegedly, it has this nanotechnology that they claim no other body wash in the world has. It's new, and essentially, it deposits microfine particles of moisturizing ingredients onto the skin to reduce the drying, irritating effects that come about as a result of bathing. Looks like they have a fragrance-free version. I think the nanotechnology is what they're kind of getting at with the microbiome nutrient serum, possibly. Excessively harsh cleansers and body washes, it can disrupt the skin microbiome, and that ultimately is a component of what leads to barrier impairment. I heard they came out with 20 different scents. Looks like they have peony and rose oil, aloe and birch water, lavender, sea minerals. Uh, not sure if that has some sort of exfoliant in it. Now, I do not recommend the antibacterial one because this has benzalkonium chloride in it abbreviated back. Benzalkonium chloride is an antimicrobial, but antimicrobial body washes, hand washes, they don't get your hands, body, any cleaner than just regular body wash, regular hand soap. They don't remove germs, viruses, fungi, any better than these. Unfortunately, what they do achieve is increasing antimicrobial resistance. Bacteria, basically, that are resistant to antibiotics, otherwise known as superbugs. Benzalkonium chloride can selectively cultivate antibiotic-resistant microorganisms, both on your skin as well as in the environment. The CDC does not recommend benzalkonium chloride-based antibacterial hand washes. Just say use regular hand soap, regular body wash, and if you don't have access to soap and water to wash your hands, alcohol-based hand sanitizers are fine. All right, moving over. They put peptides in the Age Embrace body wash, which peptides, they're humectants, but they just center the narrative around anti-aging. Humectants also could include hyaluronic acid, like the Moisture Boost body cleanser. I'm intrigued by the Acne Clear one, though, because salicylic acid can help control breakouts on the body. And it also is helpful for seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis, you probably mostly think of it as something that affects the face and then it's uh, relative dandruff on the scalp. However, it can affect really any body surface where you have hair follicles. Often that might be the chest, the groin area, under the arms. Those are frequent areas where you can develop seborrheic dermatitis. And people with deeper skin tones, it often leads to hypopigmentation because of the inflammation. But salicylic acid can help control seborrheic dermatitis on the body, as well as that condition related to malassezia yeast known as tinea versicolor. So it can be really helpful for them. Um, a useful ingredient. This bar by Dove is really good. Uh, it's their sensitive skin fragrance free um, bar soap, but it's not a soap in the true sense of the word, it's a Sindet bar. Uh, it doesn't have the harsh alkaline pH that a true bar soap, like a true soap would have. And that alkaline pH can disrupt the skin barrier pretty significantly. It messes up how the enzymes in your skin are able to optimally perform and it just leads to a lot of problems, irritation and dry skin. So Dove is a Sindan bar. You can use this on the face. I actually really like this and it's free of fragrance. That being said, as a child I always used the scented Dove, <laughs> like body wash or the bar, and I actually really love that the scent. The pink rose has kind of a vibe to it as well. This Aveeno moisturizing bar is another great alternative. Colloidal oatmeal actually has a natural detergent action to it. It helps cleanse the skin while simultaneously being hydrating and has anti-inflammatory compounds in it. This is a really great option for cleansing if you have eczema because with eczema you do want to remove debris from the skin surface because that like, things like pollutants, pollens, pet dander, just stuff that settles on the skin surface actually can end up triggering an eczema flare. But 
overly harsh cleansers can strip away the moisture barrier, which in people who have eczema, it's already impaired. So it's a really tricky balance. This would be a great option. And you could use this to bathe a child, as a side note. Like, you don't have to necessarily seek out the baby-specific body washes and bar, uh, bar, you know, cleansing bars. It's just more so about the marketing with that type of thing. That being said, the skin barrier of an infant and a baby is still developing and penetration of things is a lot greater in baby skin in comparison to adult skin. So that's a lot of skincare products marketed for babies. They do tend to be a lot milder and free of common allergens, but that particular bar by Avino is free of common allergens, is very mild, and would be suitable for a baby or child. Here we have the alcohol-based hand sanitizers. This is a reasonable, effective option for hand hygiene when you do not have access to running water and or uh, soap. And these have really come a long way in that they often have moisturizing ingredients in them. And it sounds like, oh, an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, alcohol, it's probably gonna be more drying, but Research suggests that, at least in healthcare workers, the alcohol-based hand sanitizers, they end up being less drying and irritating in comparison to frequent hand washing. Now, one thing these don't effectively do is target the um, certain microbes that cause diarrheal illnesses. So if you have diarrhea, I would stick to good old soap and water for hand hygiene. Uh, bag balm. I use this for many years. I haven't used it in a while. I I actually always found that this was pretty effective. This is an ointment. It has petrolatum in it, really good for reducing water loss. This is good for dry hands, cracked skin, chapped lips. It's also good if you have windburn or if you get chafing like under the arms, in the groin area. All of these locations this would be good for. And a word of warning though, it does, like, like Aquaphor, this does have lanolin, which some people are allergic to. So if that's you, this would be a problem for you if you're allergic to lanolin. Otherwise, it's a great option. Walgreens has a less expensive alternative to the Neutrogena on-the-spot acne treatment. These are benzoyl peroxide leave-on products, and they're both equally good. Now, benzoyl peroxide is super effective for acne, or it can be. I mean, not everybody finds that they are acne responsible to it, but it's it's really a solid acne fighting ingredient. It not only treats active breakouts, but it prevents breakouts in the future. The issue with benzoyl peroxide for the majority of people is simply tolerating it. It's drying, it's irritating. One way to derive the acne fighting benefits of benzoyl peroxide and all, super minimize the drying side effects is to do short contact therapy. I have a whole video showing you exactly how to do that, which I'm going to put as an eye in the sky here if you wanna check that out, or I'll link it in the description box too. Basically, you just leave it on the skin for 15 minutes and then you rinse it off. Um, it can be effective that way. As a matter of fact, um, here it is, this product by Neutrogena, I love. Their Clear Pore Cleanser Mask. This is basically, guiding you through the short contact therapy if you choose the intensive mask option in terms of the instructions. It's 3.5 benzoyl peroxide. Alternatively, you could just use this as a cleanser, like in the shower, lather it to the affected area, leave it on the skin for a few minutes, and then rinse it off. And the nice thing about this short contact therapy is it puts you in the driver's seat as far as duration of contact. You can increase the duration gradually while minimizing the drying side effects. I had to just go all out. There's a skincare brand, Phyla Skincare, that makes these outrageous claims against benzoyl peroxide, as well as retinoids. Check that video out, it should be up already. But this brand basically was saying like, that benzoyl peroxide is like going to age your skin. There's no evidence that that happens. Theoretically, because of the way benzoyl peroxide works to kill uh, the acne causing bacteria, it in theory could create more free radicals that would contribute to skin aging, but we don't actually have objective evidence that that ever happens. There's this trend on the internet to just take some preliminary or theoretical outcomes, like based off of uh, cells in a dish or mouse models, and 
ignore years and years and years, and in the case of benzoyl peroxide, we're talking 60 years, ignore 60 years of clinical data and make up some alternative narrative in order to scare the consumer into buying your products, which in the case of that Phyla skincare, I know I'm going on a tangent here, it's really annoying when brands do that because a lot of times their product by itself could be attractive, but then they spin in the fear, mar fear marketing and it's like, no, we're done here. Ah, you guys were asking where you can get the Neutrogena tinted mineral sunscreen that I reviewed for y'all and I'm currently using and loving and adoring besides Amazon. Here it is at Walgreens and it looks like it's currently buy one, get one 40% off. So me personally, I find that I do well with the light shade and the medium shade. There's also a medium deep shade and then the deep shade. The deep shade's too deep for me. Uh, but the medium deep kind of looks like I have bronzer on. There is a subtle difference for me personally between the light and the medium, but they both look good to me in my opinion. I like them both on my skin. So based on your skin tone, you could kind of go on either side of the spectrum a little bit. For example, if you have a medium skin tone, you might try the medium and the medium deep. Uh, you might find that you can use both of them since this is a buy one, get one 40% off. Looks like Neutrogena also has a new stick. I really enjoy their stick sunscreens because they give you a pretty large surface area here, like basically like deodorant. The thing about sticks, they're super helpful actually for um, reapplying on children who tend to be wiggly and not really care to have cream rubbed all over them when they're, especially at the beach. They're, um, so they're handy for on the go but they are prone to skip areas. So make sure you're doing multiple passes with these. Same thing with sunscreen sprays. You wanna do multiple passes. I've heard good things about this Every Day by Unsun. It's a tinted mineral sunscreen. I do believe it has, it has lavender oil in it, which is fragrance. So if you're allergic to fragrance, there's a good chance that this would not work out for you because of the lavender. But it's a mineral sunscreen tinted. I'm not sure how the shade performs. Uh, looks like a vino changed up their packaging here. Water resistant SPF 30. Their mineral sunscreens have always been a touch on the casty side, but this one is zinc and titanium dioxide SPF 30. I wonder if it's if it's a newer formula. It says new, so more than just changing the packaging. I wonder how the cast on that is. Comment below on if you've tried that. Now, if you wanna abandon use of cotton rounds and things of that sort to cut down on waste, they do make these that you can uh, reuse. They do make reusable ones. So I heard Burt's Bees came out with a new facial oil with a rosehip seed extract. Now, people will claim that rosehip seed oil is a natural retinol. There's like maybe zero 0.000003% retinol in rosehip seed oil depending on how it's harvested, the time of the year, the season, the climate, and all of that. It's one of those things where they take a tiny little piece of somewhat truth and they they just run run with it. Burt's Bees isn't really doing that here. They're just saying with rosehip seed extract. I'm not seeing anything on their marketing about it being like a natural retinol, which I appreciate because it's simply not. It's an emollient. It will soften the skin surface, smooth the skin surface. Oils, though, they don't really lock in hydration. So often they're inadequate by themselves for moisturizing and for uh, protecting the skin from the elements in terms of like windburn. This has fragrance in it, so it's basically just a scented oil. They also have this hydrating day lotion, hyaluronic acid and squalane. This one likewise has fragrance in it, but uh, shea butter, hyaluronic acid, and uh, sunflower seed oil and squalane. Those are the making. Those ingredients are the makings of a of a basic moisturizer. I did see that they came out with a new hand cream in their sensitive line: shea, sunflower seed oil, jojoba seed butter, sunflower seed wax. Looks decent. No fragrance. Here we have their sensitive toner with aloe vera, alcohol free. 
Now, aloe vera, it does have compounds in it, allicins, which are anti-inflammatory and may help with hyperpigmentation, but aloe also has a lot of other stuff that can end up being irritating. This has glycerin and humectant. Witch hazel, I've pointed out before, some people find that it's beneficial. It's an astringent, so it may help with redness, but other people find it irritating. Honey has humectants, antibacterial compounds, and anti-inflammatory compounds. Trehalose is a humectant. So this seems like it might actually be hydrating and something that people enjoy, but how it performs, I can't speak to. I've never tried it before. Gentle Facial Cleanser is also new. Um, this has similar, a similar tagline of ingredients, aloe leaf juice, which is mostly water. And they came out with a gentle face scrub with aloe. It says it's a scrub, but I'm not sure if it's got like anything of substance in it as far as being abrasive or if it's just another face wash. I find that brands can be a little bit liberal with the term scrub. Like they market it as a scrub and you're like, oh, is that going to have abrasive particles in it that are going to be disruptive to the skin barrier? And then you get it and it's like, oh, this is just another cleanser. Because as a reminder, when you wash your face, when you cleanse, that is exfoliating. It helps dislodge those corneocytes that are attempting to shed and helps smooth out the skin surface. Whether it be washing your face or just hopping in the shower and letting the water beat over your skin, you're exfoliating your body. Ooh, Aspixia has a new product, uh, this Pina Pineapple Gel Peeling, Peeling Jelly, Interesante. I guess this is like a combination of fruit acids and maybe some sort of mechanical exfoliant. You massage it on the face and then rinse it off and it cautions against using alongside other exfoliants. This uh, this is probably going to be somewhat helpful in dislodging. See, those are those shedding corneocytes there. That's going to help with smoothing things out. But a product like this can also be pretty irritating if you have sensitive skin. They also came out with a pineapple bar soap, exfoliating bar soap, active oil technology. This has salicylic acid and glycolic acid. So salicylic acid and glycolic acid can help dissolve the glue between those sticky skin cells that are trying to shed and help help them shed. This also, man, this actually looks pretty good because it also has a kaolin, a clay, that it can help with absorbing oil and impurities from the skin surface. And it has kelp granules. Those can be moisturizing. And it also has zinc pyrithium. Zinc pyrithium is good for seborrheic dermatitis. It helps cut down on that little yeast malassezia. It does have pineapple fruit powder, however, which can be irritating. But otherwise, man, this looks like a good option for uh, people who have oily acne prone skin and or seborrheic dermatitis, but I haven't actually tried it. They also have always had this charcoal um, acne bar, which is a salicylic acid bar. Similar to clay, charcoal can absorb uh, sebum and, and impurities from the skin surface and help with acne. This is one of those facial powder cleansers. Um, they're really going with the the pineapple theme here. I tried one of these from Good Molecules and I'm, I'm hesitant to recommend these because I do think that, you know, I just always question, like, is it possible that you get too little water and the product ends up leaving a residue on the skin and then it's irritating or, you know, I, I do question. But all that to say, I did actually end up enjoying the Good Molecules one in the long run. I'd be intrigued to try this one. Active oil control technology. It has salicylic acid and agave leaf extract and fragrance. It doesn't say how much it is. All right, rosemary oil for hair growth. I have a video all about oils for hair growth. The research on this is pretty limited, but it does suggest that it may be effective for androgenetic alopecia. The problem is it's not clear what the best way to go about using rosemary oil is um, for hair, hair regrowth. I have heard good things uh, anecdotally about this particular product. Let's see what's in it castor seed oil, which doesn't actually grow hair. It just is very viscous and makes hair appear thicker and it is moisturizing. So that may help minimize breakage and be helpful for brittle hair. Eucalyptus leaf oil, menthol, those can create a tingling sensation, but you can also be allergic to them. Tea tree leaf oil, 
it uh, does have some antifungal properties, but it may, it's, it's a pretty common allergen because it's a ton of different compounds in tea tree oil. Where's the, oh, there's rosemary leaf oil. Section hair into four parts exposing the scalp. Apply a small amount of the oil to scalp. Massage oil in with fingers and comb through to ends of hair. Leave in and style as directed for daily use. Apply a small amount and come through the ends. Now the infused with biotin, that's not going to really affect any change to the hair growth cycle, but it may help with filling any little porosities on damaged hair, reducing breakage. All right, heads up, I already have a video out on the best vitamin C serums for the face, where I go into detail all about the issues with vitamin C and why it's just very challenging to recommend or say for sure if any one is good or the best one. Uh, the one that's like the most studied is very expensive. I go into details in that video, so check that one out. In the past, I have reviewed the CeraVe Renewing Vitamin C Serum, and check it out for those of you who love it, because Walgreens has a version of it, uh, the store brand, and it is significantly cheaper. I know I have a, a viewer on YouTube here who comments a lot that she absolutely loves the CeraVe um, Vitamin C Serum, I've seen that comment from her a couple of times. So if you give it a try, report back in the comments. Let us know if it met expectations in comparison to the CeraVe one. Yeah, here's the CeraVe one. Walgreens also has a uh, generic version of CeraVe's retinol, uh, skin renewing retinol serum, which I really, really like. Um, and it is much less expensive. It has niacinamide, which is also good for anti-aging purposes, and it's also good for the moisture barrier and for oiliness. Well guys, Walgreens did not disappoint. I hope you all enjoyed this skincare shop with me video. On the end slate, I'm going to put my recent Target skincare shop with me. Check that one out. But if y'all enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.